Hi, I'm going to go over the code we did in class. This is like the third time I've had to do this. People keep calling me and interrupting me. So I'm going to try to get through it as fast as possible. You can pause and rewind as necessary. I'm importing everything from PyLab, which makes it really easy for me to create a figure. I don't need to use a prefix. It just shows up with autocomplete. I'm importing CSV because the data is comma separated values. I'm importing URL lib2 um, so that I can open up this big long URL. All you have to do is to find it is Google Fisher Iris data and copy and paste the URL there. So I'm going to set f equal to URL lib2 dot URL open and I'm going to pass in that URL as the parameter and uh, then I'm going to create a new reader and it's going to translate records one at a time um, in order to get the data out I'm going to set data equals list r which forces it to iterate through the whole file and now everything has been pulled into memory so now that I'm done with that I can close f I don't need it anymore okay um, so uh, now I'm ready to, to begin processing the data except for the data if I if I were to print it um, has a, a blank item at, at the end you can see it down here I printed it uh, before uh, I got interrupted by a phone call that little empty thing at the bottom will give us a problem so I'm gonna say um, I'm just gonna remove it okay so now if I can I can set data equal to uh, an array version of data np.as array will convert data to a, a numpy array and if I run this here we go and I print data um, I've got a bit of a problem uh, here's here's the problem right here uh, let me get rid of data equals data dot pop and just say data dot pop and run it okay so here's the problem data dot uh, pop returns oh if I say if I have a list so L let's say uh, D equals one two three right that's my list if I say D dot pop it doesn't return the list it returns the last item so when I said data equals data dot pop I was setting data equal to the last item in data which was the empty list so here I'm just popping from the end data converted to an array if I look at it I can see the first four things are fields that I want the last one is the classes so let me go ahead and create a subarray called fields equals data um, every row every column up to four and then labels is going to be what's left so labels equals data um, every row and column four um, run that and check it and if I do uh, fields I get the list of the numeric things and if I say labels um, I get the list of the classes um, the catch here is I want to convert this to a float so I'm going to use the as type function in numpy to convert that array to a float and I can just say float I believe I can just say float. Let's check and make sure that works, which we always do when we're programming. And if I say fields, now they're all floats. Beautiful. Okay, so labels, unfortunately, I want to be able to color it based off of the label. So I'm going to create a uh, lookup table as a dictionary, and I'm going to look at what the unique labels are. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say np.unique um, labels and that gives me this list of what the unique items in that list are so it only lists each thing once so here's my my lookup table um, it's going to be a dictionary that maps the class label to a color and in this case I'll make Satosa red um, versicolor green and Virginica um, blue right so I need the colon between the key and the value looks like I didn't do that here key colon value key colon value so I have a, a bit of a lookup table and I can say colors equals uh, and I'm going to use a list comprehension I'm going to look up table the label so I'm going to look up the, va the color that goes with the label for each label in the labels array right so that's my colors list and I'm going to go ahead and convert that as to an un numpy array so I pass that to np.as array and now I've got a list of colors F5, yes, okay, colors, boom, my big array of colors, red, green, and blue. If I want to plot this data, I can create a new figure. I can give it a title, uh, whatever, uh, iris data. 
right? And I can do a scatter plot. I can say scatter, and the x data could be whatever I want. I'll do the first two fields. So every um, row field zero, that'll be my x's fields, and every row um, field one, that'll be my y. Um, my size is going to equal. Well, I'll, I'll make it really big. I'll make it you know 60, which is not that big. And for my colors, so size and colors, they can come from arrays. So I'm going to make the color come from that uh, array of colors. If I run this, I should, in theory, well, I can get an exception. That's always possible. Uh, da -da. In my file, the error is right here. X and Y must be the same size. Ah, you see, I didn't pass the second index there. So first column, column 1, column 0. Column 1 is actually the second column. And I should get a scatter plot. Um, if everything works. Uh, oh, I didn't show it. So this isn't interactive. I need to show the plot or it won't show. So here we go. There's my scatter plot. We've seen this before, only we're using um, different axes titles. I, I could give a, a, a label to the X label. Field zero, whatever that is, and, and Y label equals field uh, uh, one, whatever that is, right? So I've got, um, oh, didn't show the labels. Uh, oh, duh. This is a function. I, I'm not assigning to it. I need to call the function from, uh, from uh, PyLab. Here we go. And here we can see it, it kind of labels the field. So you've got these little basic things you can do. Here I can kind of see how to separate that, but I want to understand this data better. So one thing I can do is I can show multiple linked plots. So I can do a, a subplot. So I can say x equals subplot. Ooh, subplot. And um, so I'm going to do uh, one row, two columns. And this is the first one. And uh, I can do another subplot that shows different fields. So I can do field two. Um, and I'm just going to go subplot. And it's going to be one, two, and then this is the second plot. And there's another parameter here. I can say that I want to share my x-axis with the first plot, which I, I kept here in this variable called um, x. Okay. So now I make sure that I'm actually showing field two. Very good. And if we run this, we should see two plots side by side. And we do. And um, if I click over here, I can move the plots around. They share the horizontal axis, which is field zero, right? And they don't really share the vertical axis because they're different. So that's, that's what I want. Um, but uh, to really explore my data, I probably want to make a four by four grid of axes and keep all of the sharing things straight. There's a function that um, helps us do that in uh, PyLab, and let's hope I get this right. Um, fig and x array equals sub, not subplot, but subplots. Uh, and I can pass the number of rows and the number of columns, and I can say that I want the, to share the axes, and I want to share the, the y axes as well. And this not only makes them share the axes, but it only labels the, the axes once, so you don't see the tick marks repeated in every plot. So now I got an, an array of axes. Let me go through them. So for x in range uh, 4, so that's sort of the x field, right? In range 4. And uh, then for the y uh, field in range 4, I, I can now make that subplot current. So I'm just going to say axes. And I'm going to look up those axes that were already created in x array. So x uh, field, y field. And that'll make that set of axes current. And uh, now I can, I can begin to plot. And I think I, oh, I must have deleted it. I can do the scatter plot. And I'm going to do fields um, every row. And let's say x field. And then I'll, for the y's, I'll do fields at every row and the y field. And um, the color, uh, c, actually, it's just c equals colors. All right. Um, so this is showing all of the data there. 
the share X should be right, then we do the show. Let's cross our fingers that we didn't make any um, outrageous mistakes, which wouldn't be unusual. Boom, there we go. So now I've got every, um, every, whoa, come on. Sorry, here we go. So I've got every single uh, plot shown here at once. It gets to be a little bit hard to see. Um, I guess I can interactively change the, the settings, like get rid of the H space and the V space. All right, there we go. I just click the button on this this plot thing, so I can kind of see how the the data uh, fits. And um, if I move anything that shares the axis, moves with it, right? So um, I think that this is okay, and I should be able to zoom in. Let's see. Well, you guys can tweak this. Perhaps, perhaps I should have done this one row at a time. But we can, you know, if you have to, you can set this sort of a grid up manually. But the idea is you can see each one of the fields versus each one of, of the other fields. See, there's a home button to restore me back to the original state. And from this, you can see a lot of ways that you can separate these red guys, right? So it looks like on this axis, at about two point uh, whatever that is. Um, you've got a, a split or at this axis also at two point something. For these guys, if I were to pick one axis that I thought separated them the best, it could be, I mean, here and here they both seem separated. So it seems like axis three separates them all pretty, pretty well. So there's a line here in axis three and a line there in axis three. So this is axis three. If I were to plot this guy, the diagonal guy, as a, as a bar chart, um, maybe I'd, I'd really see that a little bit um, better. So, Okay, so I'm running out of time, so I just um, wrote some code. Um, here, you see something interesting. Um, oh, shoot, I should get rid of this. That's why I'm getting two figures. So here, we see something interesting. I have uh, this thing where I take labels, which is an array, and I compare it to a string. And what that actually produces is an array of bools. So I can say class zero. It's true whenever you're class zero and false otherwise. Um, same for class one and class two. So this compares every element to that. And, and this gives me sort of a mask that gives me each one of these three classes. All right, it's true when I'm in the class, it's false otherwise. So here I went through each row, each column, actually opposite, but whatever. I went through each subplot. Um, I fetched the axes. And now I check to see if the X and the Y field are the same, in which case I don't want to plot that diagonal line. Instead, I'm going to show uh, three histograms. So um, one aligned to the left, one to the middle, and, and one to the, to the right. Um, and uh, uh, so for, for that, I take my fields. And instead of slicing here, I can actually just pass in this array of Booleans. And it just plucks out the entries from that array where this Boolean thing is true. So this is sort of masking out just the, the records that are of class 0, just the records that are of class 1, and just the records that are of class 2. And I plot the X field. The hist function plots a histogram. Its parameters are the data that I want the histogram of. So a histogram, it bins your data. So I'm going to create 10 bins along that axis. I, maybe I should create even, even less. Maybe I'll do like 6 bins. right? And um, so you get, you get your bins, and then um, you have uh, the color that you want to plot the bars in. So it's going to do a bar chart. And here I'm specifying the relative width of the bar. So each bin has so much real estate. And I want each one of my bars to be a third, so I can plot one of them left aligned, one of them middle aligned, and one of them right aligned. And I can see all three bars. So if I plot this now, Um, here's what I get. Those diagonal plots have the bar charts. Um, oh, well, it looks like I set the R width uh, incorrectly, but I can see the bar charts along these diagonal things, um, which really kind of clearly shows out here the reds clump here, and here I can see that there's only a little tiny bit of overlap on feature 3. 
So in feature three, by itself, I can already achieve my best classifier um, if I live.